What's up, air cooled army? Today, the pro will show you how to install a rear disc brake conversion. We're starting with a pro built transaxle, and we decide to chase the threads to make sure everything's clean and there is no hang ups when we put our caliper brackets on. We blow them out, make sure they're clean of debris, and then we flat bastard file the surface to ensure that there is no protrusions from a hammer banging it uh, you know those kind of things matter in a quality installation we clean up the axle shaft and we actually spray paint the ones that we do builds here that way when the axle nut is installed it's really clean um, I love it every rear disc brake conversion for the early cars will get a set of billet dust caps and replacement seal kits uh, to make a clean installation. With the seal kits, we do install them dry. Um, there's a funny thing with aluminum and rubberized parts, uh, you can't lube them on the install. So once you uh, tap them in, uh, they will stick and not pop out again. So you just wanna get them flush with the top of the cap and you're good to go. Repeat this on the other side and we will proceed to the next step on the caps themselves they have a little V groove we call it lube in the V and in the V groove itself we're gonna slow it down here and show you the little V there when the seal race is installed it needs that lube in that V to make the seal so no oil comes out of it if you don't lube this uh, eventually you're going to have seepage coming out of that so we want to make sure we uh, fill those that groove with grease on both sides and have them ready to install We started this install with a set of new uh, MP uh, seal races and you can see there's like a small discoloration in that even after We uh, grind them down. We're trying to make a flat surface so that they're parallel when we tighten it down As you see very clean finish that's what we want. That's what we're looking for. So we start with the oil sling. We put that on and the fat smaller overing goes on. And you want to do it dry now, but um, after you get it installed, you want to take some axle bearing grease and, and kind of coat it. So when it goes under compression, it kind of conforms in a little V channel. The caliper bracket goes to the rear of the car inboard and we always put these uh, little gasket uh, facing upwards and you match that with the contour of the new cap. We put two bolts in to line it up and we put them in dry, meaning no Loctite. All we're doing is centering it where we want to. So as we tighten it down, everything seats properly and then we will uh, install the second bolt, excuse me, this, the next two bolts with Loctite. We use red Loctite here and we're using new hardware, hardened washers and uh, socket head Allen cap screws for this install. You don't have to use this, you can use your factory bolts. We tighten those down and then we pull the ones back out and then we apply Loctite onto those. Pretty simple, pretty basic, easy. With that through, we're showing the uh, V group, excuse me, the chamfered side of the uh, seal race will go inboard and the flat surface will go outboard. Now we're checking for proper uh, the race sticking out past the cap. It needs to stick out past the cap or you have something missing. Now we install the chromoly washer with the bevel side inbound, inward, and now slide the rotor on. It's a precise fit. We make these, uh, these hubs with a brooch finish. And as you see, this uh, chromoly washer has a bevel, and that matches the bevel of the rotor. So when uh, installing it, you want to match the bevel uh, so that it, when it gets tightened up, it it 
kind of gets a more of a press fit in there. We use a 36 millimeter socket with a half inch impact. Our compressor goes up to 175 and we uh, hit it hard, hit it like we live until you can't move it anymore. And when it can't move it anymore, we, we locate the hole and we keep hitting it till we get to that where we can put the cotter pin in correctly. As you see here, the cotter pin hole is lined up with the castle nut. Uh, it'll, it'll be installed uh, properly. If you practice this practice, where you do this and not go off the VW book, you'll never have to replace these hubs. Uh, we're not building, you know, 60 horsepower cars. We're building high performance cars. So we want to make sure that we do it to the specs that are included in your install guide. We put the long leg of the cutter pin facing outwards and we cut off the short one. Very clean install. The caliper and, uh, excuse me, the rotor is missing the uh, socket head allens and we're good to go to the other side. Now understand we don't need to show you that side. Obviously you're going to do the same uh, as instructed in the first part of this video. If you do have any questions, please click down below and uh, we'll answer those for you. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching.